to be in Korea. Um, it's uh, my uh, first uh, developer event in Korea, and I've um, grown up in Microsoft over 22 years. I feel like doing uh, developer events, and I must say this is the most dressed I've ever been uh, in front of developers. Uh, but it's great to be here this morning uh, to talk about what is, I think, some, a topic that I'm very, very passionate about, which is creating great opportunities uh, for developers all over the world, because that's, I think, at the core of what Microsoft is. When I, when I think about Microsoft, 39 years ago when Bill Gates started the company along with Paul Allen, uh, we were a developer company. Uh, we were a company that produced uh, basic uh, and that's how Microsoft's journey got started, and it's always great fun uh, to have a chance uh, to talk about what we're doing for developers and the opportunities we're creating for uh, developers, and to do so in Korea uh, is a real privilege. So I'll uh, just give you a little bit of a feel for why we're excited about the platforms we're creating and our vision and what this means uh, to developers going forward. The world that we live in today is this mobile first, cloud first world. Uh, and when we say mobile first, we really talk about mobility. It is not about one device and one application. It is more about the person and the individual who has the ability to move between devices. You have large screens, small screens, you have sensors, you have three billion people who have computing power all around them. And the real vision we have is that all of that computing power will have experiences. So experiences in your living room, experiences in conference rooms, that are really being powered because of the power in the cloud. The ability to reason over large amounts of data that makes these experiences rich is what we mean when we say mobile first, cloud first world. Now the question that needs to be asked and answered is what is Microsoft's unique contribution in this mobile first, cloud first world? And for us the answer is pretty clear. We are the company in its core that is going to be about productivity and platforms. We want to be the productivity and platform company in a mobile first, cloud first world. We want to reinvent productivity so that every individual and organization can do more and achieve more. That's our mission. Think about it. As we have all of this computing abundance, uh, you have 212 billion sensors that are capable of general purpose compute. Uh, you have 3 billion people with phones. You have all of these other devices and you have all of this computing power in the cloud infrastructure. What is scarce? The scarce commodity is human attention. And so for us to rethink productivity from the ground up for the individual, for teams, for groups, families, and even business process uh, is very, very central to how we are going to come about it. Uh, one of the best examples of this, and you know, we will look forward to even launching this in Korea, is our intelligent agent Cortana. Uh, Cortana to me, perhaps is the best representation of what we mean when we say we will reinvent productivity. Cortana has the ability to reason over all my personal data, all my work data. I have the assurance that it's my agent. It is not somebody else's agent. It is helping me with my reminders. It is helping me get more out of every moment of my life. That, to me, is the essence of what we can do in a mobile first world when it comes to reinventing productivity. The other core piece which Microsoft, from its very beginning, has had is this focus on platforms. In fact, I started at Microsoft in what became Windows NT. And I remember from even my very first day that the sensibility that we have in being able to harmonize the interests 
of developers, IT professionals, and end users. The interests of all of those three constituencies and bringing them together is what allows us to build broad, ubiquitous platforms like Windows. Uh, and I think it's going to be very, very important uh, that you have that sensibility. And that's the approach we're going to take going forward with everything we do. Uh, that platform centricity uh, is something that I would say is perhaps most unique about Microsoft. If you ask me what is it that's most exciting for me personally about Microsoft's mission, what is its essential purpose, we're not just about building products for people to use and buy. We are not also about trying to treat you as a product and collect your data and you know resell it in advertising. We are at the essence about enabling you to build products. Being there as a platform and a tool provider to the makers, the artists, the builders, the developers, that is what I believe is the true purpose of Microsoft. And that's what excites me, and that's what really gets everybody in our company to think about what is the unique contribution we can make absolutely are committed to with Windows is to have a comprehensive developer platform that spans all screen sizes. So everything from your phone to Internet of Things and sensors all the way to Xbox. We will have one application runtime and this notion of being able to, as a developer, build universal Windows applications that can work with mouse and keyboard, can work with touch, can work on small screens, large screens, can work with great graphics, can have speech input. The richness of applications that people are building is going to be uh, available at Microsoft in, in the Windows platform. But one of the other salient points, and I'll keep coming back to this, even in some of the examples that we will talk about right here in Korea, <laughs> is it's not just Windows. We have other platforms at Microsoft that are available for you to exploit, to extend, to build on. One of them is Office 365. We think of Office 365 as a developer surface area. Everything, contacts in Exchange are APIs. Calendar information in Exchange is APIs. SharePoint lists are APIs. The identity information in Azure Active Directory that is part of Office 365 is APIs that enable anybody who is targeting enterprise customers to have single sign-on. Uh, so it's a very rich surface area for any developer building applications to be able to make Office data how applications get built and the intelligence capability. Think about Cortana-like intelligence in every one of your applications. We took all the learning that we got building things like Kinect and doing speech recognition and vision, things like what we did in Bing to understand the web. We took all of those algorithms and put them into this toolkit called Azure Machine Learning Service which really enables now every developer in any vertical, from games to line of business, to be able to infuse their applications with intelligence. And that's a pretty exciting capability, which is you know, a higher level service that's part of Windows Azure, as part of Microsoft Azure. So this notion of really enabling developers to pick and choose. You can pick to build for Windows. And you can be assured of the broadest platform. You can build once, you can write, run across because of the universal application capabilities on all screen sizes. You can extend Office 365. You can use Azure. You don't have to use them all. You can use any one of those APIs and be part of the Microsoft developer ecosystem. It's that openness, that flexibility uh, that we want to provide. The second point I want to make also is we want to enable you to bring any of your skills, 
any of your code into this platform. We want, for example, on Azure, perhaps, it's the best example of true polyglot programming. You can be a Python programmer, you can be a Java programmer, you can be a Linux developer. You can bring all of those virtual machines, all of those code libraries, your tool sets to the Microsoft platform. You can target any device. You can target iOS, you can target Android, you can target Windows Phone with the universal applications, you can target even Windows 8 devices. And you, we really want to make that tool choice, code choice, very, very flexible. Because that's the realities we know uh, that all of you live in. And we want to make our platforms ready for that. When we even think about some of our APIs, take Office 365 or Azure APIs. We have language bindings for Java. We have REST APIs for everything. We have client libraries for the Mac. So we really want you to be able to use any entry point and yet take advantage of the power of our platform. So this is again has deep meaning for how we are approaching uh, developers anywhere uh, in the world. One of the things that I have always uh, thought deeply about, given the origin of our company was a tools company, the fact that we built the basic interpreter as the first thing that we did, we care a lot about developer productivity. Build Studio Online, make it possible for you to be able to do things like cloud build, your project management in the cloud, things like uh, your ability to really collaborate as a team in using our cloud service and be that much more effective in how you create your applications. That to me, I think that's at the center of what we're doing with especially Visual Studio Online. So one of the typical patterns I see expressed all the time is people start off with something like an Azure project which has code perhaps in a virtual machine that they have had from other projects. They build an extension, so for example, you could use something like the Azure Machine Learning Service to add intelligence to your app, so that's in the cloud tier. You can then build out notification services, you can use uh, some of our media capabilities. Many applications today have rich media capabilities, so you can use services like the Azure Media Services. And then you will build endpoint apps, apps for all platforms. You can build it for Android, you can build it for iOS, you can build it for Windows uh, Phone and Windows 8. And you really want to have this tool chain support all of this. So you want to have one place where all your source code is, you want to have one place where you're tracking all your bugs, you want to be able to do your builds and have a real productive REPL you know, uh, workflow across all of this. To us, that is what we do at the core of what Visual Studio is and Azure is. Uh, and so being most productive as a developer is something that we will support uh, deeply. We have some great examples uh, right here in Korea in terms of how developers are taking advantage of these platforms. Uh, the first uh, example of this is uh, Vapo, which is, I believe, uh, I apologize if I mispronounced it, uh, but I believe it's a very popular uh, Q&A service uh, for in education, a social Q&A service um, uh, in uh, Korea that's built on Azure. Uh, we have SE Works. Uh, and we have Kanosoft, and these are mobile platforms. One of them is around security. Uh, in fact, targeting Android uh, platform. Uh, and in, a, in another case, it's also got a, a mobile device, you know, a development platform that's supporting multiple devices. So these are local developers who are taking advantage of the Azure backend uh, to do innovative things. Uh, we also have examples. Uh, of uh, developers building applications uh, for Windows 8, 
Uh, the first one uh, is the, I, I forget the, I can't read Korean, but I think it's the writer um, uh, application. In fact, one of the great advantages of this app was that it was built and it is now even going overseas uh, because of the advantages of the Universal Store. Uh, the Head Soccer and the Lotte Cinema are other examples of universal applications being built uh, for Windows 8 and because that platform is going to stay constant as we make progress in the next release of Windows, we will still be able to have the same developer platform reach more sockets, more end users, more uh, you know, more in-app purchases. So therefore, the opportunity for developers is only going to increase uh, with the subsequent releases of Windows. That this is perhaps the best time to be a developer. The opportunity that is there in any walk of life, in any industry, in any vertical application category, and quite frankly, in any economy, in a fundamental way through the power of software, is more true today than 39 years ago when Microsoft was founded. The kind of tools that we have, the kinds of opportunities to take the power of software and distribute it in this ubiquitous fabric that exists around us is tremendous. And really that means that any one of you in this room here can build something and take that creativity and have it impact anyone on the planet Think about that power. That power is what we want to enable. We as a company are all about creating the tools and platforms for others to be able to do their best work. That is what inspires us. That is what I believe developer events like this uh, really foster. And so I am sort of couldn't be more pleased to be able to have a chance to talk to you about it. And then I would encourage each of you uh, to learn more about what we have to offer and what we're doing in Windows, in Azure, and in Office 365. Push us, give us the feedback about things that we should do, things, flexibility that we need to have, the opportunities that we need to create for you. That feedback cycle in events like this is what makes us uh, a great company for developers and that's been at the core of us uh, from the day one and I started as a developer evangelist and so to me that means a lot. Thank you very very much uh, for the opportunity. Have a fantastic developer day and I look forward to using many of your apps in the future. Thank you very very much.